Good morning, Cokie Mill Christian Church family. Good to see you all this morning. As I always say, you can see me, I can't see you, but I know you're out there. So here we are, another week. Hope you've had a great week, whatever it is you're doing. We should have some kind of a, uh, I don't know, send in your pictures of uh, what you're doing. Maybe are you doing any landscaping projects or any craft projects, or that might be food for thought. Maybe we should have some kind of contest or something just to uh, fill the summer up a little bit with some fun. And I'm sure you're all having a great time and having a lot of fun. As things open up more and more in our city, um, you're getting out and about. And uh, speaking of opening up, we sent out both a text and Facebook post last week to our congregation, just keeping them apprised of what's going on and how the elder board and staff are praying all of this through and and uh, looking forward to seeing you all in person very, very soon. And we'll keep you posted on when that's going to happen. In the meantime, though, we decided it'd be great to launch small groups or connect groups, as we call them here, Bible study groups. Uh, beginning next week, we're going to do those in person. Our Connect Group leaders are ready and waiting uh, to see you all again. So if you would like to be a part of Connect Groups in person, we will be socially distant, of course. Whether we meet here at church, we're going to have a few rooms open for them, or you meet on someone's deck or patio or park, um, please let us know if you'd like to do that. Be involved. We're going to be studying the book of James by Francis Chan. We're going to be doing that via our Right Now Media that we have recently um, partnered with. And so we're going to have all that information for you on Facebook and our website about Right Now Media. But if you'd like to be a part of Connect Groups, please call or text 217-787-0828. That's 217 787 So you can call and say, hey, count me in for connect groups or text, and then we will have one of our leaders get in touch with us. So I'm going to say that again, 217 787 I just really wanted to do that because I always think that's kind of fun when people speed up. Okay. Anyway. I uh, hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. We look forward to our new series uh, kicking off today. God bless you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye. Hey, good morning, everybody. Great to have you viewing online today. I want to thank you again so much for your support, your cards, your letters. Uh, it, it's really been amazing as we're dealing with, uh, you know, being uh, socially distanced uh, today we're beginning a new series on Psalm 23. I've been anxious uh, to, to preach this series for quite a while now. It, it's one of the most beloved passages in the Bible, and I think especially now with what we're going through, it's, it's going to help us have that, that anchor for our faith. Uh, this short psalm has been used for, uh, by thousands of people over hundreds of years uh, to bring them comfort. Uh, just a few months ago, I was able to use this psalm uh, to bring to help someone find peace in their final moments, and I know how powerful it is. Uh, so let me ask a question right in the beginning. What is a psalm? Uh, we hear the word so much, but we're not quite sure what it is. A, a psalm is a psalm or a poem uh, or a prayer uh, that gives human dialogue with God. So we get a conversation uh, of someone else talking to God, either through a song or a poem or a prayer. Um, I want us to take a look at this uh, Psalm 23 again, because uh, it's, a, it's a model for living a life of contentment and renewal uh, and following the Good Shepherd. Uh, David wrote this psalm probably later in life, uh, possibly during the rebellion of his son Absalom, who tried to take away his kingdom. Uh, in this psalm, David deals with some of the difficult things he experienced during his long walk with the Lord. Uh, David was a man who experienced tremendous victories. He made mistakes. He endured many hardships and burdens in life. Through this psalm, David teaches us how to trust God in every area of our life to the end of our life. David was a, a shepherd and a son of a shepherd. He, de he defeated Goliath when he was a shepherd boy. He had some amazing victories in his life. He later became known as the shepherd king of Israel. 
But he writes this psalm as a sheep who's learned to follow the good shepherd. Uh, One of the things I want us to do as we walk slowly through this psalm, because it's it's so rich, and not only it's imagery, but it's faith in how to trust God. I I want us to walk through this psalm, maybe uh, just a verse or less each week, and as we build on these verses, we're going to find ourselves trusting in the shepherd, the good shepherd, like never before. So let me read the whole psalm, and then we're going to take a look at verse 1 this week. It says, Psalm 23, a psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we look at these verses today, we're going to understand that the Lord is the shepherd and we are the sheep. And David writes this, this psalm, this poem, as, as a sheep who's followed the good shepherd all of his life. It's interesting that as we take these, these short uh, visits on, uh, on the text, uh, today we're just reading nine words in the verse one, but uh, we're going to find that at the end of this series, you're going to be able to memorize this psalm very easily. Uh, years ago, I tried to uh, memorize scripture, unfortunately, without much success. Uh, I found that if I just took the scripture and meditated on it, I, I memorized it. it. It came back to my memory. But if I, if, but if I really tried to memorize it, it didn't stick with me. But if I tried to find uh, the meat of what the verse was saying, it, it stuck in my mind. Part of the work of the Holy Spirit uh, according to John 14, 26, is to bring back to our remembrance what, God, what God's word says. So we have a powerful tool as we uh, recite this psalm, as we meditate on this psalm, and as we see ourselves making that journey with God, as David made that journey with God. Um, the first supporting scripture I want to give you today is Psalm 100, verse 3. It says, Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Uh, There's many other verses we could look at in the Bible that that makes it clear that that we're the sheep. Uh, What are some of the characteristics of of sheep? It helps us to know that in order to to follow the shepherd like uh, like sheep would follow their shepherd. Among the animal kingdom... Sheep are prone to get lost, and they need almost constant care. Uh, Another interesting fact about sheep is, as creatures of habit, they follow paths through desolate places, even though they're not far from excellent feeding grounds. Shepherds confirm that they are timid and stubborn. (laughs) They can be frightened by the most ridiculous things, though at other times nothing can move them. You can't drive sheep like you do cattle. They must be led. Uh, Philip Keller wrote a a great book on Psalm 23, and I want to quote him. Uh, He says, The staggering fact that Christ, the creator of such an enormous universe of overwhelming magnitude, desires to call himself my shepherd and invites me to consider myself his sheep, his special object of affection and attention. As, as we look at this psalm, the first five words have special meaning. Uh, the, the Lord is my shepherd. 
There, there's something powerful about those, those five words. As you begin to meditate on them, as you begin to read them, as the Holy Spirit helps bring those back to your memory, you're going to find comfort. You're going to find stability. You're going to find that as you follow the Good Shepherd and as you know the Lord is your shepherd, you're going to find yourself overcoming in areas possibly that you didn't before. I, as part of... Uh, the homework this week, I, I want to give you seven things to, to meditate on this week. One for every day of the week. And then at the end, we're going to look at verse one. But in the beginning, we're going to look at the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He watches over me. That's, that's one of the things that, that God does. He watches over us. Some, sometimes we feel alone. Sometimes we feel isolated. But the Bible tells us that nothing is hidden from the sight of God. I want to give you a supporting scripture. Psalm 139, verse 1 says, O Lord, you have examined my heart, and you know everything about me. The Lord's my shepherd. He watches over me. The the second thing I, I want you to see today is that the Lord cares for you. The Lord is my shepherd. He cares for me. In Isaiah 40, verse 11, it said, He takes care of his people like a shepherd. He gathers them like lambs in his arms, and he carries them close to him. I I want you to see yourself walking closer with God as we walk through this series together. The Lord is my shepherd. Wow. Point number three. The Lord is my shepherd. His word guides my steps. There's so many times in life that we have, we have decisions we have to make. We have places, we, we, we have a fork in the road, and, and we're not quite sure which way to go. And, and it brings us comfort to know that the, 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 the Lord guides our steps. We have to seek his wisdom, but he guides our steps. Sometimes he gives that guidance quickly. Other times it, it takes a while, and, and sometimes he brings in a friend or someone else to, to help that process become clear. In Psalm 119, 105, it reinforces this. It says, the, the, his, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The Lord is your shepherd. Um, as we looked at the fourth thing, and I, I want you to each, each day kind of repeat these, these little statements about the Lord being your shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He calls out my name. In John 10, which is kind of a supporting passage in the New Testament of Psalm 23 in the Old Testament, Jesus says this, he says, my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. The the Lord is my shepherd and he calls me by name. Oftentimes we seek God last, why not seek him first, why not know that The Lord is your shepherd. He's right there with you. He's guiding you. By faith, you walk and follow after him. We have another promise that's found in Philippians 4.19. The Lord is my shepherd. He provides for my needs. In in that verse, it says, And my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I've been truly amazed at, at how God has used you to supply the needs for this church. Not one missionary ha- has, has missed us helping them out. Matter of fact, we've helped several, uh, we not only help people uh, here in the States, but we've helped some in the foreign field. One missionary said, some of the pastors I know don't even have rice, so we sent money to buy rice. Uh, another pastor uh, wasn't able to open, open his church for two to three weeks, didn't have any income, so we, we sent something to help them. It's because of your generosity, because of God supplying our needs that we can supply their needs. I, I want to commend you on your faithfulness, on your generous giving. The sixth thing I want you to see, the Lord is my shepherd. He gives me strength. I, I think you're probably getting this now as you hear it repeated over and over again. The Lord is my shepherd. The first five words in that beautiful psalm. In Psalm 29, verse 11, it says, The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. 
And now we get to the first verse that I want to spend the rest of the time on in this message. And David says it so well, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If I was going to paraphrase this verse, I'd say it this way, the Lord is my shepherd, I will be content and not worry. Uh, one of the definitions is, uh, of contentment is to feel satisfied and feel free from worry. Sheep don't worry. <laughs> they, they trust the shepherd to take care of, uh, of, of them and the uncertainties of life. They, they don't worry. They, they just follow the shepherd. Wherever the shepherd leads, they follow the shepherd. They, they don't worry. You know you weren't born worrying? <laughs> I'm, I've got my little grandson with me. He's not worried. He, he's just happy as a clam unless he gets hungry. You, know? and you weren't born worrying. It, it's something you had to learn. But unfortunately, we've, we've learned that very well. And we, we've gotten really good at, at worrying on a regular basis. Worry is unhealthy. It's unfruitful. It can't change the past or improve your future. The only thing that worry can do effectively is keep you miserable. And David said, the Lord's my shepherd. I'm going to be content and not worry. Uh, the Bible tells us a number of places not to worry. Jesus told us not to worry. Paul told us not to worry. I'll give you just a couple brief references here. Matthew 6, 25 uh, Jesus said, that's why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. I know what you're thinking, Stan, that's easy for you to say. It is easy to say, but it's hard to do. Paul said this in Philippians 4, 6, he said the same thing. He said, don't worry about anything. So how do we keep from worrying? Because we have more uncertainties in our life now with what's going on, with the coronavirus, with the unrest, with everything going on. We probably have more reasons to worry than we have in years. So, so I think that's why I was so excited about this, this series as, as we began this study. I think it really applies to where we're living today. So how do we keep from worrying? Sheep don't worry. You know, we weren't designed to carry the burden of worry. That's why it's so devastating when we attempt to do something that God doesn't want us to do. In 1 Peter 5, 7, we have a, a, an answer to worry. But to find this answer to worry, you have to apply your faith, engage your faith, release your faith, just like in all the other things about God. He says this, and, and, and Peter was one who was worried. Peter was one who messed up. But he, but he was inspired to write these words. I'm going to give you an amplified translation, which gives a few more words, but deepens the meaning. He said, casting the whole of your care. The, the whole of our... We're good sometimes at, at casting part of our worry upon the Lord, but there's sometimes there's that area of worry. It could be our finances. It could be our kids. It, it, it could be it, it, maybe our job. There's some areas it's hard to cast over on, on the Lord. It says, casting the whole of your care, all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns once and for all on him. Who? The Lord, the good shepherd, that we're following through life. For he cares for you affectionately and he cares for you watchfully. When you start to feel anxious, I think it's a signal to confess the Lord is my shepherd. The problem with worry is it keeps us focused on the wrong thing. The thing that drives us away from God instead of the thing that draws us to God. There's something powerful, I've said it several times today, about the phrase, the Lord is my shepherd. It stirs your faith. 
I, I, I dare you to try it. I, I encourage you to try it to, this week. Just keep saying, the Lord is my shepherd. Just keep visualizing in your mind. You're following after God. You're following after his word, that, uh, the word that illuminates your path, the decisions that you make, the, the guidance that you have in your life. The Lord is my shepherd. You have a personal God. Personal God that loves you, cares about you, and wants you to know him by faith. I want you to consider this. Uh, Philip Keller said this in his book. He said, as you look into a clear night sky, you would see 250 million times 250 million stars, each larger than our sun, scattered across the universe by the hand of the shepherd. How deeply do you trust the Lord to shepherd you? Do you trust him on Sunday and allow that trust to be placed, replaced by worry on Monday? How about this one? I think this is where a lot of us are right now. Do you trust him when you see where you're going, but take back the controls when you find yourself in uncomfortable territory? I think all of us have been in uncomfortable territory these last number of weeks. It's time to trust the good shepherd. I want to just repeat these uh, points as I, as I close the message today. I want, you to, I want this to be hammered home. The Lord is my shepherd. And, and I'm just going to repeat the points. Just write them down. And uh, each day of the week, you can, you can do point one on, on Sunday, point one and two on Monday, and so on. And at the end of the seven days, you're, you're going to have it. This first verse is going to be... Uh, so easy to it's so easy to learn the lord is my shepherd he watches over me the lord is my shepherd he cares for me the lord is my shepherd his word guides my steps the lord is my shepherd he calls out my name the lord is my shepherd he provides for my needs the lord is my shepherd he gives me strength the lord is my shepherd i'll be content and not worry Do you really know the Lord as your shepherd? Or you ha have you been a living a life where you, you understand God, you've made that decision, but you're really not following after him? Now's the time to really know him. Now's the time to really draw near to him. Now's the time to embrace him like you never did before. I, I want to encourage you to do two things. I want to encourage you to review this message that we've went over today. And I, I want to encourage you to, uh, we're, we're doing this study on the book of James. It's so life-changing in itself. I, I want to encourage you to do that study. You could do it on your own, online, or, or call a friend and do that study. This will be the time when you can really draw close to God. Even if you're on vacation, you can catch us online. You can, uh, you know, pick a quiet time where you can review these things and, and build your faith and grow your faith and, and make a difference like never before. Be that person that, that leads and guides your family. Be that one that, that is, is the, the freshness in the, in the room. Be that one that's a light in the dark place. Be that one that God has called you to be, and, and, and you can be it, and you are becoming it even now because the Lord is your shepherd. Well, let me share a, a verse on giving before we close today. Um, we're going to have a great summer together in these two series. I'm really excited about both of them. Let, let me give you this offering scripture. It's 2 Corinthians 9, 7, and 8. And, and it's talking about how we should give. Each man should give what he's decided to give in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. God is most interested about our heart and our character. And he doesn't want us to give just because we know we're supposed to give. He wants us to give because we're, we're excited about God's kingdom. We know we're a part of God's kingdom and when we want to sow into that. And then we have a little bit of a promise there in that eighth verse. It says, and God is able. God is able to make all grace abound to you. We did a whole series on grace. We know how powerful grace is. As you become that giver, that, that cheerful giver, God is able to pour out his grace upon you so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. 
Well, why don't we pray before we close today? Uh, there's going to be a little uh, infomercial on, uh, on the Right Now Media that's right after this message that you can get on and, and sign up for yourself, whether you decide to do the small groups in person or do it at home, or even pick a different topic. It's going to be something that will really bless your life. We want to bless you. So take advantage of that. So let's pray. Uh, Father God, we come before you today and we thank you, Lord, that you are our good shepherd that, that leads us, that guides us, that cares for us, that, uh, that shows us the way that we need to go. Uh, we pray for our world right now. We pray for our, our, our leaders, Lord God. May you be with them. May you give them wisdom. I, I pray for our, our families and our individuals, Father. We, we, we are tempted to worry in these uncertain times, and, and you've told us many times in many ways not to worry. I pray that you, you give the people comfort. You give them peace. You, you give them the contentment that the good shepherd can give. I, I pray that you would bless each and every person, Lord God. If those, there might be some that have a need, we, we pray, Lord, you make that need aware to us so that we can help them out and be a blessing to them. Thank you, Lord God, for the faithfulness of your people. And thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to share your word. We give you all the praise and glory. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Hey everyone, it's PJ. I wanted to share a little bit about Right Now Media, basically the streaming library of Bible study videos that inspires faith every day of the week. And it's something Cokie Mill wants to get involved with, and as Pastor Stan said, on a daily and weekly basis. So let's jump right in. Head over to CokieMillChurch.org. There, we're going to go ahead and click the Right Now Media banner. This should take you right to the Right Now Media profile page. Fill out your name, your email, password, et cetera, et cetera, and hit that next button at the bottom. Once completed, you'll be able to see libraries, stuff for kids, search bar, send invites, and your profile. Let's go ahead and look at the Book of James. So let's hit the search bar. Book of James. Voila, there it is, 12 sessions. Let's hit the watch now button. The book of James, the study is done by Francis Chan. There you'll see all the sessions, the features. You'll see the leader's guide, the handouts, and this is what we'll be following. So now you know, thanks so much for being a part of this church and this ministry and joining Right Now Media, where we can follow this and do this together. Hope you guys are doing well. We're still praying for you guys. Love you guys. God bless. Thank you.